So, earlier today, we got some information from some pretty credible sources that 120Hz is finally happening on the iPhone 13. And obviously, this is great news because this is a feature we've always wanted. This is a feature I've heard rumors about since the iPhone 10. So, obviously, a lot of people are very gassed right now, but this situation feels very similar. In fact, I have a very strong sense of deja vu because we heard all about this with the iPhone 12 series. And of course, we now know what happened with 120Hz on the iPhone 12. So the very same thing could happen with the iPhone 13. Before I delve into this, I thought I'd just temper the expectations because of course the iPhone 13 is very much early in its development stage and with COVID still being very much a thing in the world, there could be interruptions with making things and 120Hz might not make it on the iPhone 13 too. But either way, with that disclaimer aside, let's delve into this report. So make sure to like and subscribe, click that bell notification. And with that being said, let's just tuck in. So this information comes from the ELEC. They are a pretty credible Korean website who have leaked things in the past. So the information is credible, but what we're hearing is essentially what we heard last year. For example, number one, Samsung and LG will be making the displays of the iPhone 13, much like the iPhone 12. Now, yes, I know that many of you are wondering what's the surprise in that because LG and Samsung have been making displays for iPhones for an eternity now. Well, actually, there is more to this story because BOE, a Chinese display manufacturer who makes displays for Huawei, was supposed to build the displays for the iPhone 12 and Apple were making this move from Samsung to BOE because they are cheaper and so Apple can obviously save costs and also make prices lower. In fact, the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 mini were supposed to be $50 cheaper and also come with 128 gigs as standard. But of course, because BOE kind of flopped at some certain quality assessments and so Apple had to go back to LG and Samsung who are more expensive than BOE. And so, of course, the final price of the iPhone 12 and 12 mini were $50 higher. And of course, we had to have 64 gigs as standard in 2020, which of course is kind of a bummer. So, of course, Timothy being the gracious man he is, he goes back to BOE this time around for the iPhone 13 screens in the hope that they've improved their tech and they've met the standards that Apple was hoping for in the beginning. But I am here to tell you guys that uh, BOE has flopped the regulation tests again. How do they flop twice in a row? Honestly, I'm just speechless. How can they be one of China's largest manufacturers of displays when they clearly can't make displays? Like, that's just really dumb to me. And so because BOE has failed these tests, again, LG and Samsung are building these displays. And so don't expect a price reduction with the iPhone 13 series. And yes, that means that 64 gig iPhones will still be a thing in 2021 and honestly at that point it's just straight up a crime but of course now we come to the meat of the story the info you guys wanted and of course that's regarding 120 hertz so in the words of the elect apple is apparently launching two out of four models with this ltpo thin film transistor material that will give the 120 hertz refresh rate we've been wanting forever now now, if you didn't know, LTPO stands for Low Temperature Polycrystalline Oxide. That's a bunch of words I just saw on my screen, but it sounds pretty cool. And this technology actually allows the display to variably refresh from 1 hertz to 120 hertz. In fact, little cheeky fact for you guys, the LTPO technology is currently used on the Apple Watch to give you the always-on display. Actually, talking about always-on displays, this article does mention that there is a small possibility that this iPhone 13 could get an always-on display because of this LTPO technology. Of course, just because Apple gives us LTPO doesn't mean this feature is definitely happening, but of course, 
Apple of late is copying a lot of Android features and since they've taken the widgets and the picture-in-picture -picture mode it's time to also take the always on display so please Timothy take that away bring it to the iPhone I will be a very happy man if that is the case next year anyways Coming back to 120Hz, this report says that because of this LTPO tech, the displays can now reach 120Hz and it should be variable like I mentioned. So basically, you get the best of both worlds, you have the higher refresh rate without having a major hit in battery life. And of course, that is a good thing to hear because the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro series wasn't that great in terms of battery life. And of course, if there's an even worse hit because of 120 Hz, then that would be catastrophic. So that is very good to hear that Apple is balancing battery life and a high refresh rate display. Now, I'll be honest, as I speak these words, I am reminded of the iPhone 12 video I did on this exact same matter because yes, this LTPO tech was supposed to be in the iPhone 12, apparently according to some pretty credible rumors. And as far as I know, there are two main reasons why the iPhone 12 Pro series didn't get 120Hz. Number one, Samsung decided to make the feature exclusive for this year to the Note 20 Ultra, which debuted the feature, which is fair enough because it is their tech at the end of the day. So Samsung can do whatever they want with their tech. But because of this, number two, Apple was allegedly testing, possibly using 120Hz always on without any refresh rate, so 120Hz for literally everything, and of course that annihilated the battery life because as we know already, the iPhone 12s have smaller batteries because of 5G, and if they had 5G and a 120Hz display that's always on, then of course that's not going to be good for battery life. So I think Apple did make the right decision because I would rather have better battery life than a high refresh rate display. But now this feature is allegedly not exclusive to Samsung anymore so anybody can use it and so that's why Apple's planning to bring it to the iPhone 13. At least that's what I'm reading up on in these reports. So yeah, that's pretty much everything when it comes to this whole 120Hz kerfuffle regarding the iPhone. And uh, again, I do want to mention, I am not going to get hyped about this because it is very, very, very possible this feature somehow gets removed from the iPhone because of external factors. And so again, I do want to say, don't get your hopes up. Maybe 120Hz just never becomes a thing on the iPhone. Okay, I'm joking, don't beat me up. I know that 120Hz will eventually become a thing on the iPhone, but honestly, if you think about it, for the average consumer, 120Hz isn't a huge feature they want. And if anything, I don't think many average users will notice the difference between 60Hz and 120Hz. So definitely, if Apple needs to access feature, they 100% will in exchange for a feature that will benefit the masses. Anyways, that's what I think of that. But of course, as a tech enthusiast, I do want a 120Hz display. And so hopefully in the coming weeks and months, we get some more credible information regarding it from reliable sources like Mark Gurman and Love to Dream. Maybe even the mysterious CoinX will come back to tell us about this situation because right now it's just a mess. Anyways, I'm going to end it here. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click that bell notification. And with that being said, I'm going to see you guys in the next one. See you, peeps.